looking for a timeless movie filled with laughter, surprises, and heartbreak. Look no further than a 1936 classic. This film is a delightful comedy that will keep you entertained from start to finish. But wait, there's more. Behind the scenes, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts that you won't want to miss. So keep watching this video to learn more. Do you have a special memory associated with this movie? Perhaps it's watching it with your family on a cozy movie night or discovering it for the first time with friends. Share your memories with us in the comments below. Is there a particular scene or moment that has left a lasting impression? Maybe it's a hilarious one-liner or a touching interaction between the characters. We'd love to hear about it. So grab some popcorn, settle in, and enjoy the timeless humor and touching moments. And don't forget to share your own stories and memories with us. We can't wait to hear from you. A 1936 film has left a lasting mark on both cinema and society. It delves into social issues like class differences and the challenges of the Great Depression connecting with audiences even today. The movie's clever humor and pointed social observations continue to captivate and make people think. This film's influence goes beyond its release, shaping subsequent movies and TV shows. Its creative storytelling and unforgettable characters inspire new generations of filmmakers and actors. The exploration of themes like wealth, privilege, and personal growth remains pertinent in discussions about societal inequalities. The main character, portrayed by William Powell, stands out for his iconic qualities. His journey from a forgotten man in poverty to a respected figure in high society illustrates the strength of resilience and self-discovery. Audiences appreciate his wit, charm, and integrity. Moreover, the film explores gender dynamics and relationships, adding depth to the narrative. The intricate interactions between characters shed light on the complexities of human behavior, emphasizing the importance of empathy and understanding. In essence, the movie's timeless themes, memorable characters, and insightful social observations contribute to its ongoing relevance. As people continue to revisit and appreciate this classic piece of cinema, its impact on popular culture and society remains undeniable. During the production of the movie, the hotel setting for the charity scavenger hunt underwent a name change due to objections from censor Joseph Breen. Initially identified as the Waldorf Hysteria, it was renamed the Waldorf Ritz Hotel, a blend of two prominent hotel brands of the time, the Waldorf Hysteria and the First Ritz Carlton Hotel in the U.S. Jane Wyman, one of the cast members, hailed from a background where her mother, Gladys Hope Christian, worked as a doctor's stenographer and office assistant, while her father, Manning Jeffries Mayfield, was employed as a meal company laborer. Carol Lombard, another actor in the movie, had a tendency to ad lib by inserting swear words into the dialogue, leading to the need for reshooting several scenes. These behind the scenes details offer insight into the intricate process of bringing this classic film to life, showcasing the challenges and creativity involved in its making. Included among the American Film Institute's list of the top 100 funniest American movies, this classic comedy follows the story of a wealthy family and their interactions with a forgotten man living in the city dump. As the plot unfolds, Irene, a member of the affluent Bullock family, humorously confuses her home address with the location of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, adding to the film's comedic charm. Notably, Rogelio Gonzalez adapted the story into a Mexican comedy film, Escuela de Vagabundos, starring Pedro Infant, which is celebrated as one of the funniest comedies in Mexican film history. Through its clever humor and memorable characters, this timeless film continues to entertain audiences around the world. Alice Brady is best known for her role in the 1936 movie My Man Godfrey as a socially ambitious mother. However, she also performed serious roles, such as Lavinia Manon in the original Broadway production of Eugene O'Neill's Morning Becomes Electra. William Powell, another actor in the film, inspired an instrumental song by Leo Koch titled William Powell. The studio version is on Cox's 1989 album My Father's Face, and a live version can be found on 1995's Leo Koch Live. In 2002, the film underwent remastering, restoration, and colorization for the first time. In the story, a mix-up happens when Irene provides the wrong address, stating 1011 Fifth Avenue instead of the correct 101 Park Avenue. This occurs after she wins a prize for helping a forgotten man and invites him to be her family's butler. The lead actor, Irene's first husband, is William Powell. Interestingly, another actor in the 1934 movie Manhattan Melodrama, Clark Gable, later becomes Lombard's second husband. In 1936, Cornelia tries to bribe a forgotten man with $5,000, which, adjusted for inflation, equals $110,000 in 2023. 
In the film, this address mix-up happens after Irene wins a prize for bringing in a forgotten man and asks him to become a butler for her family. The lead actor in the movie is Carol Lombard's first husband, William Powell. Notably, Clark Gable, who also stars in the 1934 movie Manhattan Melodrama with Powell, later becomes Lombard's second husband. In 1936, a character named Cornelia offers a $5,000 bribe to a forgotten man. Adjusted for inflation, this would be equivalent to $110,000 in 2023. In the 1936 movie My Man Godfrey, Carol Lombard made history by becoming the first Universal Actress nominated for Best Actress at the Academy Awards. The film also earned a spot on the American Film Institute's 22 list of 400 movies nominated for the Top 100 America's Greatest Love Stories. Interestingly, during a scene where William Powell carries Carol Lombard over his shoulder up the stairs to her bedroom, a stand-in named Chick Collins was used. This behind-the-scenes tidbit showcases the meticulous planning and attention to detail in creating memorable cinematic moments. In the history of cinema, a remarkable collaboration unfolded between two actors whose on-screen chemistry was undeniable. They shared the screen in numerous films, creating memorable moments that captivated audiences for years to come. Their partnership began in the 1930s and spanned over a decade, encompassing a variety of roles and genres. They starred together in detective series and romantic comedies, leaving an indelible mark on the silver screen. Their work together didn't go unnoticed. At the Academy Awards in 1936, their film made history by securing nominations in all four acting categories. This achievement was unprecedented at the time, setting a new standard for recognition in the film industry. Their connection extended beyond the screen, with their camaraderie evident both on and offset. Their collaboration was not just a testament to their talent, but also a reflection of their enduring friendship. Their legacy lives on through the timeless appeal of their films, reminding us of the magic created when two actors come together in perfect harmony. Three leading actresses, Marion Davies, Constance Bennett, and Miriam Hopkins, were considered for the role of Irene. However, the role eventually went to another actress. There was a claim that the film had no formal script, just pages of notes, but earlier drafts of the screenplay with censor comments are available at the Margaret Herrick Library in Los Angeles, proving this claim false. My Man Godfrey was the first film to ever receive four acting nominations at the Academy Awards. This happened in the year that the supporting categories were introduced. In the movie from 1936, there's a clever play on Manhattan Society column by a character named Hatton Man who writes Park Avenue Chatter. It's a fun nod to the lively atmosphere of Manhattan. At one point in the story, Godfrey, after drinking with Tommy, enters the scene while Irene and Molly are crying in the kitchen. He's a bit tipsy and sings a bit of the song Drink a Highball, which is associated with Harvard, omitting references to Pennsylvania to match a Harvard man's choice. Later, in 1946, there was a radio adaptation of the movie called the Academy Award Theater. William Powell reprised his role, bringing the story to a new audience through radio. Overall, the movie cleverly plays with words, includes subtle contradictions, and adapts well to different mediums, giving audiences various ways to enjoy the story.